everyone. Welcome back to my channel. It's Becca from At Home in the Sun. And today we're gonna to be doing a tutorial of how to make these peekaboo clear cash envelopes. So these are some that I've already made. We're gonna be going through the process of how to make these. So I love the peekaboo style because you have a pretty design on the front, but you can also see a little bit of the money. And then on the back, it's completely clear. So you can see at the back of the cash. So I have made some of these already. These are gonna be going in my new homeschool binder for 2024. I've made these and I've made two more. So I've made five in total and I have two more to put together with you guys today. So here's what you're gonna need for this project. So you're gonna be needing a computer because we are gonna be designing these on canva.com. You need a printer. You need printer paper. Now I used cardstock but regular paper works just fine, regular printer paper. So um, some kind of printer paper. I'm gonna be using a laminator today with thermal laminating pouches and also a cutting tool. And some optional things that I'm gonna be using today is a hole punch like this one. So I can um, hole punch them and put them in my binder. And I'm also going to be using a corner rounder, but once again, that is completely optional. So let's go ahead and go over to canva.com and I'll walk you through the process of how I design these envelopes. All right, so we're going to navigate to canva.com, come over here to create a design and we're gonna click on custom and it's gonna be eight and a half by 11 inches. So that will create your template. Okay, so we're gonna go over here to elements and we're going to type in backgrounds. And you can select whatever background you want for your envelopes. There's so many, um, if it has a little crown next to the background, that means it's only available for pro subscribers. Um, I do have a pro subscription, so um, I'm actually going to use this one right here um, just to show you how to create it. So we selected our background. One important note about the background, you need to be able to move it around on all four sides. So we are going to adjust this background to be about three and a half inches um, in height. And then in width, we want it to be about 6.8 inches. So that's what I adjusted it to. So now we're gonna go over here to elements and we're going to search for triangle. Now this is just the way that I do it. There's people, that, you can do it in different ways. Um, I'm gonna select that first triangle under graphics. Gonna go up here and change the color to white. And then we're gonna be rotating this triangle to about 78 degrees. And then we're gonna kind of, um, Okay, then we're gonna go up here to transparency and I'm gonna change the transparency to 75 so I can still see the background through this triangle a little bit. And that's just gonna help me when I'm cutting it out um, after I print it and everything. So then I'm gonna adjust this triangle here. And as you can tell, this is what we're gonna be cutting off. And that's gonna be our little peekaboo corner that we can see the money through. So adjusting the transparency to 78 where I can still see the background, like I said, will help me when I'm cutting this out. So that's why I do it that way. Just makes it a little bit easier. Okay, now I'm gonna come over here to text and we're gonna add um, the category for our envelope. So you can type in whatever category you would like. So we're gonna type in spending and then you can play with the fonts and um, the size of the font and the, the type of the font. There's so many different fonts on Canva. So you can just go through, pick what you like. Once again, if it has a crown next to it, um, that means that it's only available for pro subscribers. Um, I'm gonna pick a font though that anybody can use so it's available for anyone. So let's pick this one, it's called Porcelain. And we're gonna adjust the size of it, it's a little too small for the envelope. Let's go up to 96. And then just try to center it um, on your envelope. Remember that you're gonna be cutting off that corner so try to center it the best that you can. And then you can play around if you want to um, add some effects or change the color of your font, you can do that. Um, Canva has this cool thing where you can um, pick the colors that are in like the background or the picture. Um, 
So let's go with this blue, the same blue that's in the background. We're gonna add an effect to it. So you can play around with all the different effects, make it look the way that you like. So that looks pretty cute. So I, what I'm gonna do now is I'm going to copy and paste it and then just bring it down. Now be careful with this little upper triangle part. You wanna bring it far enough down so it's not poking into the first envelope that you just made. So then you can um, copy paste it, type in a new category, then you can copy the whole page and go through that same process and type in all the names of your categories. And that's it. So when you are done with your design and you have all of your envelopes done, you're gonna go to share. You're going to click on download and you wanna save it as a PDF print. I like to flatten mine, so click on flatten PDF. And then it'll have you select the pages. So if you have multi pages, you wanna select just the pages that you wanna save. So that would be all of mine because I only have two pages in this document. And then click download and then you will select the folder on your computer that you want to save it in. And then once you do that, you will open it print it off on your computer and then I'll meet you back at my desk. All right, so we are back. So I did use a different background to show you guys how I designed them than the one that I'm actually using for my envelopes. So these are the last two that I'm gonna be putting together with you guys and I made these the exact same way um, as I walked you through on Canva. Um, I don't know if you can see on camera how we talked about like this little triangle that we made like transparent so I can see through it. It might be hard for you guys to see on camera, but I can see the background a little bit. So I'm gonna use that as a guide when I'm cutting this little triangle part out. One thing that I did wanna mention real quick is that Canva does have a measuring tool. However, um, I noticed that when I measure something on Canva, like we did when we were designing, um, we measured this to about 6.8 and then 3.5 inches. I noticed that when I end up printing out my designs, they print out smaller. I don't know if that's just a problem for me. Um, so what I did show you for me actually prints out smaller. So that's something to be aware of. So let me show you with my ruler. So when we designed this in Canva, it was 6.8, but when it prints out for me, and it is at 100% and all of that, it's a little bit above six and a half. It should be up here. 6.8 would be up here almost to seven. So it did print out smaller. And then width wise, it should be three and a half and it's a little over three and a quarter that it prints out. So I did have to account for that once I noticed that that was um, happening. I did account for that and I did um, make them a little bit larger in Canva. So if that's not a problem for you, then you might need to adjust your measurements just a little bit, but just be aware that that has been a problem for me. All right, so the next step is we're gonna be using a template. So I just cut out this template out of cardstock and it measures six and three quarters by three and one fourth. Those are approximate. So this is what we're gonna be using to cut out some pieces from our laminating pouches. And I have already done that off camera. So let me show you what I'm talking about. So you would take your laminating pouch. And for me, I'm gonna be using five ML laminating pouches. You can use three ML. If you want your envelopes to be really sturdy, you can use 10 ML. Um, it also depends on the kind of laminator that you have and how hot that it heats up. Um, so you would take your laminating pouch. And what I do is, I cut out pieces like this. Now remember your laminating pouch is two layers, right? So you're gonna be cutting out both layers. So you cut out enough of these to match how many envelopes that you're gonna be making. So I, I've already made my cuts for the last two envelopes that I'm going to be doing. So these are the ones that I've cut out already. already. And as you can see, the layers are still together just like that. I'm trying to keep the layers together. So we're gonna be using those in just a second. We're also going to be using this laminating pouch. So you have your cutout pieces and you also need full laminating pouches to make the envelopes. So you're gonna need several, like I said, depending on how many envelopes that you wanna make. All right, so after you've cut out your laminating pieces that are about the same size as these, what we're gonna do is we're gonna cut these out with our cutting tool. 
so for me you can just use regular scissors for me i use this cutting tool I'll, I'll have all of this stuff linked in the description down below if you're interested in getting any of it this is the fiskars paper cutter i love this cutter i use it all the time so we're going to be cutting these out um it's so easy to make nice straight lines with this thing i just love it um, I use it with my business as well because I do sell a lot of budgeting materials. All right, so we're gonna be cutting off this corner right here. So you're just gonna line everything up. There we go. All right, I'm gonna finish cutting this one out and cut out the next one and then I'll be right back. All right, so let's talk about laminators for just a second. Um, I'm gonna show you this one, which is actually the one that I'm not gonna be using. The one I'm gonna be using, you just heard the beep. I'm gonna be turning it on so we can heat up. Let me do that real quick. I'll show it to you in just a minute. So this was my first laminator. This is a Scotch laminator and it is great. It is a great beginning laminator. So this is what I would suggest if you don't already have a laminator. I would suggest the Scotch brand and it has two heat settings of 3 ml and 5 ml. Um, it worked really good and I did use it when I first started making my own envelope. So this is the one that I would suggest. However, for today, I am going to be using my professional laminator and this is the one that I do use in my business. So let me slide it over. It is really big. <laughs> I'll let you guys see it. It's Big Bertha, it is gigantic. So this is it. It's the Power Lammy Jam Free ooh, LM350. So this is what I am gonna be using today. Um, obviously, I don't expect you to go out and buy something like this. I, I bought this for my business specifically because I do laminate a lot of things that I sell. So I'm gonna be using this one today. So one of the biggest pieces of advice that I can give you guys when you are making your own envelopes is to turn up the heat on your laminator hotter than what you think it should be so this one has a lot of heat settings um, because it is um, a professional one but for example if you're making your own envelopes and you're using 3 ml laminating pouches turn the heat up to 5 ml turn it up hotter than what it says on the laminator that will save you a lot of headache because through a lot of trial and error i discovered that it needed to be hotter because when i was making my envelopes it was causing clouding in the laminating sheets because we're using several sheets of laminate so it was causing clouding and bubbles and things that didn't look good so once i turned up the heat and i ran the envelopes through multiple times that kind of solved that problem so i'm going to be using 5 ml laminating sheets today and i turned up the heat on my laminator to 7 ml so that will take care of like i said any bubbles any clouding and an envelope should come out nice and clear all right so this thing is about heated up so here's how we're going to put the envelopes together we're going to get out our full laminating sheet i'm actually going to turn it this way because i'm going to be feeding it through um, this way. So here are the rectangles that we cut out. Now on laminating sheets you have a shiny side and then you have a matte side. And the matte sides, those are the sides that adhere. So here's what we're going to do to make our envelopes. You're going to take these two pieces and you're going to flip them to where the shiny sides are facing each other and the matte sides are on the outside. So we're gonna line those up the best that we can. I'm actually gonna turn it this way. And what I like to do is kind of work with this bottom corner right here. So now I'm going to take my printout and I'm gonna line everything up with this bottom, what is that, the right corner, bottom right corner. Line it up the best that you can so what you want to do is line up the bottom the best you can. The top, we are going to be cutting a little bit of the top off, so it's okay if this is not lined up perfectly, but the bottom really needs to be lined up as good as you can line it up. All right, so that's lined up pretty good, so I'm going to try to hold it together. Open my laminating sheet, and I'm going to wedge it in here so it doesn't move. All right, so that's wedged in there. Close it for just a minute. 
Okay. Now I'm going to be leaving about a half an inch of space here. Um, on my envelopes, I do leave about a half of, an, half of an inch because that's where I punch my holes. So make sure if you're putting multiple envelopes in here, you don't put them right up against each other if you plan on punching holes in your envelopes. All right, so let's do the second one. So let me grab the this rectangle. Once again, we're gonna be flipping the shiny sides together and the matte sides are facing out going to be working with this bottom right corner here. Grab my print out and then line everything up the best that we can. Okay, that took longer than the last one to line everything up, but I think I finally got it as straight as it's going to be. So once again, I'm making sure that I'm not putting it super close to the other one because we're going to leave a little bit of space for the holes. Wedge that in there then close it up. All right, now very carefully, we wanna make sure that everything stays lined up. We're going to pick this up and run it through our laminator. All right, so I just ran these through two times. So let me turn off my laminator move it to the side. So I ran it through twice and I turned up the heat to seven ML because I'm using five ML. So it looks pretty good. Um, it's looking pretty clear. Look at the back. I'm not seeing any bubbles. So let's grab our cutting tool. All right, so for the top of the envelope here, you're gonna be cutting as close as possible to um, the printed page and that's gonna open up a pocket. All right, so let's see if I cut close enough to open up that pocket. Yep, so that's our pocket. That's where our money's gonna go. All right, and for the sides, you wanna leave a little bit of space. You'll see a little bit of bubble where um, the laminating sheets end. You wanna leave a little bit of space there. You don't wanna cut too close to that bubble. Otherwise it will open up on the sides and that's not what you want. You want it to stay closed on the sides. Now for the bottom, this is where we're gonna be leaving a half of an inch for our holes. Now this is optional, you don't have to put them in a binder, but I do keep mine in binders, so I want to hole punch them. So I'm gonna line up um, my printed sheet with the half inch mark here on my cutter. So it helps me measure. Okay, and I'm gonna do the same thing. So I'm gonna go ahead and cut out the top of this one. So for this, you wanna cut as close as possible to open up that pocket. So there's that pocket. Let me check the side. This looks really good. All right, so let's finish cutting out this one. So line it up with a half inch mark and cut these out. All right, so let's put this away. All right, so overall these are looking, these are looking good. Yeah, no major bubbling and there's no cloudiness at all. So I'm gonna go ahead and hole punch these. All right, one last step that I am gonna do, but I'm gonna do it off camera is rounding the corners. Um, I rounded the corners on these already so they don't stab me because this laminate can get pretty sharp, so I will be rounding the corners um, off camera. So let me real quick show you the difference between 5ml and 3ml. So these are some peekaboo envelopes that I made a couple years ago, and I used them for like a year, so they got a lot of use. They held up really well. Um, they're, I don't know if you can see it on camera, but they're, there's some cloudiness in this one because I didn't, like I said, turn off the heat. Um, high enough at that point. Like I said, it was kind of trial and error when I was first making these. Um, so this was made with 3ml. And as you can see, it's, it's very flexible. It's still sturdy. It still worked like for a whole year for me. Um, and this is made with 5ml. So it's less flexible. It's more rigid, um, a bit more sturdy. So keep that in mind when you pick um, your thickness of your laminate. Also, when I first designed these, I kind of made them too long. So I did shorten that. So if I line them up here, you can see 
how much longer these were. They were way too long. <laughs> these actually stuck out of my binder. Um, I didn't realize it at first, but they were really too long. So I did shorten them a bit and they seem to be like the perfect size now. So let me grab my $100 bill from my other envelope and try them in one of the new ones that we just made. So it's a perfect fit. And you can see your hundred in the corner here and then on the back. So I love the way that peekaboo envelopes look. I think they look so pretty. And I hope you guys, if you end up making your own, that you really enjoy them and you have fun creating them on Canva. If you have any questions, please leave them down in the comments. I am gonna be putting these in my homeschool binder. So I'm going to go and round the corners on these real quick and I'll be right back and we'll put these into my new homeschool binder real quick. Um, this is my new homeschool binder I'm gonna be using for 2024. Uh, it's a resin binder. It's so beautiful. I did an unboxing of this if you want to go check that out. Um, it's from Chicky Treasures over on Etsy. She makes beautiful resin binders. I have three of her resin binders and they're just gorgeous. So this is my new one. So let's go ahead and put our envelopes in it for this year. All right, so got my new envelopes in. So let's see how this looks. Those look really cute. I have curriculum, co-op supplies, streaming, subscriptions, evaluations, and field trips. So yeah, those are my homeschool um, categories. That looks really cute. I'm really happy with the way that these turned out. So if you guys have any questions, in the comments about this tutorial, um, please let me know. And also let me know if you decide to make your own peekaboo envelopes and how it went. I would love to know if this tutorial was helpful for you. I hope you guys have a great rest of your week and I'll see you in my next video. Bye guys.